Dear students, welcome to the second semester portion of Zoology Core and Complementary Courses. This semester we have to deal with only a single phylum that is phylum Chordata. Phylum Chordata comprises the organisms which have got a backbone. We have already discussed in our previous classes that Phylum Chordata refers to the organisms which have got some special characters, especially the notochord, then dorsal tubular nerve cord, pharyngeal gill slits or gill pouches, then endostyle and postanal tail. We can see these characters one by one because these are the important or distinctive characteristics that make an organism a cordage. A cordage is nothing but an organism which have got a backbone in any of its life stage. It doesn't mean that the notochord is present throughout the life. You know, we human beings have got no any notochord, but we have got a backbone that is called vertebral column. But we too had a notochord in our embryonic stage. That's why we are classified into the phylum chordata. All chordates have got notochord in any of its life stage. So what is a notochord? The notochord is a flexible rod-like structure that is derived from the mesoderm. You know mesoderm is one of the three germinal layers of higher organisms which are the three germinal layers ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm. Most of the internal organs are derived from the mesoderm. The notochord is also derived from the mesoderm and it's a backbone. It's a flexible rod-like backbone and it is formed of particular types of cells. You know, each and every organ or tissue are made up of some types of cells. Blood is formed of RBCs and WBCs. Then uh, platelets are the. Then our bone is uh, made up of osteocytes. Our cartilage is made up of chondrocytes. Similarly, the notochord is a particular tissue or particular organ that is formed of particular types of cells called notochordal cells. And these notochordal cells are disc shaped and the collection of a lot of notochordal cells are surrounded by three layers of sheath. So if you are asked what is a notochord, for one more question, you have to write notochord is a flexible rod like structure derived from the mesoderm. It acts as a backbone. It is formed of disc shaped notochordal cells surrounded by three layers of sheets and it provides the strength, mechanical support, and sites for the attachment of muscles. It also aids in locomotion. If you write all these points, you will get one mark. Okay. You know, our endoskeleton is bones, and there are some uh, cartilages also. Our bones have got the function to provide us strength, mechanical support, and sites for the attachment of muscles. Similarly, the notochord is one and only skeletal structure inside the body of some organisms. These are providing strength, mechanical support and size for the attachment of muscles. It also aids in the locomotion. Second distinctive characteristic is dorsal tubular nerve cord. Why is it said dorsal? Because you know organisms have got two sides, upper side is or the side which is upward facing upward is called dorsal side and the side or the portion which is facing downward is called ventral side. If you see the structure or the anatomical structure in detail, this is the dorsal nerve cord and the notochord is just below the nerve cord. Then Again, below to the notochord is the elementary canal. See here. So, what is the dorsal most one? Is the nerve cord. Nerve cord anterior most swollen part of any nerve cord is called brain. In our case, also spinal cord is there, and the anterior most swollen part of a spinal cord is the brain. And 
This new cord passes almost through the length of the body and it contains only nerves and some other related tissues. So this is positioned dorsally to the body that's why it is called dorsal nerve cord and since it is tubular in structure it contains a lumen and filled with some fluid that's why it is called tubular so since it is dorsal and it contains a lumen with fluid it is called dorsal tubular nerve cord the nerve cord is dorsal to the alimentary canal and is a tube hollow filled with fluid lies above both elementary canal and notochord and it persists in some cordage and degenerates in some cordage and develop into brain and spinal cord in higher cordage that is what it is. okay we can see the next distinctive characteristic of cordage that is pharyngeal gill slits or pharyngeal pouches if you touch and feel the side of your neck, can you feel any openings there? No. If you had got openings, that is called pharyngeal slits, but you had to in your embryonic stage. So each and every caudate organism has got a pharyngeal or pairs of pharyngeal or paired pharyngeal slits on both sides of the pharynx they may be opened outside sometimes that's why i ask you to touch and feel the sides of your neck pharyngeal slits are the openings that lead from the pharyngeal cavity to the outside okay you know pharynx first portion of our elementary canal is the mouth that is buccal cavity then second portion uh, beyond the mouth or buccal cavity is the pharynx and it leads to esophagus then stomach intestine etc so pharynx is a small portion after the buccal cavity and before the esophagus so from the pharynx on both sides if there are some openings to outside of the body they are called pharyngeal slits you know slits are opening and uh, around these pharyngeal slits or inside these pharyngeal slits there may be some tissues leaf like tissues or page like tissues filled with a lot of blood vessels if that type of tissue page like or leaf like tissues are there filled with a lot of blood vessels they are called vascular lamellae vascular refers to filled with the blood vessels or related with the blood vessels lamella means the plural of lamella lamella refers to page like or leaf like tissues that type of tissues are present only in the gills that's why lamella are referred to as gills so in aquatic forms these pharyngeal slits will develop vascular lamella or the page like tissues filled with the blood vessels and they act as the gills which receive oxygen from the surrounding water and the oxygen will be diffused into the blood vessels in the page like tissues but in some protocordates that means uh, phylum uh, subphylum uh, urocordata and subphylum cephalocordata it helps in filter feeding feeding refers to the intake of food the pharyngeal slits are helping in filter feeding also if the food along with the water is taken and water is passed outside through these slits and food is passed into the intestine that's why it is referred to as filter feeding it filters out it filters the water out and takes the food in okay then interterrestrial cordage is present only in embryonic stage that's why if you touch and feel you can't see the pharyngeal slits on the sides of your neck or pharynx so if there is an organism or caudate organism definitely there is pharyngeal slits in any of its life stage maybe in embryonic stage or throughout the life stage the next distinctive characteristic of phylum caudata is the 
endosthyme endosthyme is nothing but the tissue found on the floor of the pharynx it secretes mucus that traps food particles so basically you can say that this is a structure or tissue that helps feeding because it traps the food particle while it swallows the water along with the food particle the water will be passed outside through the pharyngeal gill slits we have discussed in the previous slide but the food particle will not go along with the water through the pharyngeal gill slits because it is trapped the food particles are trapped in the mucus secretion of the pharyngeal floor and that pharyngeal floor is made up of a tissue called endosthyme but in higher organism you know that there is an organ called uh, thyroid gland you know in your neck portion you can see or touch and feel a particular type of gland that is thyroid gland thyroid gland secretes a lot of hormones especially thyroxine then triiodothyronine etc and this thyroxine are iodine containing proteins you know thyroxine is an iodine containing protein this endosthyle in lower caudate also secrete iodinated proteins since these are iodinated proteins we can say that endosthyle is the forerunner of our thyroid gland okay so endosthyle is the forerunner of the thyroid gland okay so endosthyle or thyroid gland we can say like that are the characteristics of cordage and it is present only in cordage is not present in non cordate organs then next feature is the post anal tail that means the tail is present in the portion after the anal region the post anal tail provides motility in larval tunicates and amphioxus larval tunicates means the first subphylum of the cordata then amphioxus coming under the second subphylum of the cordata we'll discuss later tail is the muscular prolongation you know what is meant by a tail tail is just just the muscular prolongation of the body it extending backwards behind nerve cord or vertebral column it in aquatic forms it serves as the chief locomotor organ means it helps in the movement of the locomotion of the organism in terrestrial forms it assumes various shapes you know the structure of or shape of the tail of organism may vary from one to or species to species and function also varies and it acts or it is present just as the coccyx in human being you know coccygeal vertebrae are the so we have also got a tail but it's not that present outside because they are only seen as the coccyx then there is no cilium or any internal organ or viscera but there are blood vessels nerve cord a few uh, notochord in some organism and a few vertebrae only a few vertebrae in the beginning okay so this is an important character there will be at least some rudiment of the post anal tail in any cordage now let's discuss other cordate characters other cordate characters are which are the other cordate characters that are not present in non cordates you know heart is present in non cordate organs but we have learned in the first semester dorsal tubular heart in a arthropod i have discussed the presence of a dorsal tubular heart the heart is present dorsally inside the body but in the case of caudate organism the heart is present ventrally to the body that is one of the characteristics of the caudates and red blood cells are present in the caudate organisms and hepatic portal circulation we'll discuss later then four limbs except apodon amphibians and snakes there are no limbs in the apodon amphibians that means the ichthyophis 
the organisms ichthyophis belongs to apoda of the amphibia and snakes also lack the limbs then what is meant by hepatic portal circulation we can see here hepatic portal circulation and normal circulation in our body you know there are arteries and veins in our body the blood from the heart is pumped away through the arteries and blood from all parts of the body are pumped towards the heart or through the veins in normal parts of the body the blood from all parts of the tissues or body are collected by small veins and these small veins are collected and joined together to form bigger veins and bigger veins join the heart but the blood from the elementary canal and associated organs are collected by the capillary surrounding these organs and they are supplying or joined to form hepatic portal vein hpv hepatic portal vein and they supply the blood to the liver directly and the excess nutrients in these blood because they are coming from the alimentary canal excess nutrients in these blood are stored in the liver because hpv or hepatic portal vein is supplying blood to the liver and the hepatic portal vein are divided into many capillaries or small blood vessels inside the liver okay then these capillaries will again join to form bigger veins and come out of the liver and joins the heart that is the hepatic portal circulation regularly the blood vessels from all parts of the body join to form bigger veins and joins the heart but in the circulatory system or sorry the elementary canal the blood is pumped towards the liver then joins the heart that's why it is called hepatic portal hepatic refers to the liver there is a portal system through the liver that's why it is called hepatic portal system you can see here the inferior mesenteric vein collects blood from the intestine then superior mesenteric vein also collect blood from the intestine this is the large intestine this is the small intestine then uh, splenic vein collects blood from the spleen gastric veins collect blood from the stomach then cystic vein collects blood from the gall bladder all these blood or all these veins join to form hepatic portal vein or portal vein it enters the liver and supplies or breaks up into many capillaries all the nutrients obtained from these parts will be accessed by the liver and excess nutrients will be stored here and toxic materials will be detoxified and the pure blood along with pure nutrients will be supplied towards the heart so that is an important system of caudate organism next the characters shared with higher vertebrates first semester we have already dealt what the bilateral symmetry is what triploblastic condition is bilateral symmetry means two equal halves are obtained by cutting or dividing an organism through one plane of division only one plane of division through the median longitudinal axis or mid dorsal ventral line that is present in the caudis because bilateral symmetry is an advanced feature then triploblastic condition three germ layers are present ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm then metamorphism is present in caudis what is meant by metamorphism arrangement of the body into several segments that is called metamorphism even though we cannot see segments in our body we have got the uh, metamorphism or the segmentation in the arrangement of nose muscles vertebrae ribs etc 
then syphilization is present in cordyce means the concentration of all our nerve tissue towards one part of the body and all important sense organ at the anterior end that forms the brain and that is what is called syphilization syphilization refers to the head region then coelom coelom is present in non cordyce also but it is present in or oh, is definitely present in the c uh, cordyce there are two types of coelom schizocelic coelom and enterocelic coelom schizocelic coeloms are the coelom formed by the splitting of the mesoderm is formed is present in the annelids arthropods mollusks higher cordyce and enterocelic coelom is formed by the pockets of the archenteron of the embryo is present in the echinoderms and cephalocordates and the organ system are also present in the higher vertebrates so these are the characters shared with higher vertebrates in the case of chordate organs now we can go to the classification of chordates classification phylum chordata are divided into three subphyla subphylum urochordata subphylum cephalochordata subphylum vertebrata we belong to subphylum vertebrata the subphylum urochordata have been divided into three classes class acidiacea class thaliacea class nervicea then subphylum cephalochordata is divided into one class deptocardi okay only one class is living now then in the case of vertebrata they have been divided into two divisions a nata there is no nata nata means the jaw bone a nata means there is no nata then second division is the nathostomata there is jaws there is jaw bone or jawed organism a nata or jawless organism so jawless organisms have been divided into two classes class ostracodermy and class cyclostomata ostracodermy are extinct then cyclostomata are divided into two again class mixaini and class cephala spider spidermorphy as per the new version of the classification cyclostomata have been divided into actually two there is no class cyclostomata now instead there are two classes class mixaini which contain hack fishes then class cephala spidermorphy which contains lambrays then coming to the jawed organism the organism with the jaws there are two super classes super class pisces contains the all fishes and super class tetrapoda contains all organisms which have got four legs among the fishes there are three classes class placodermy class chondrichthys and class ostichthys but as per the new classification there are two classes class actinopterygy and class sarcopterygy placodermy chondrichthys chondrichthys are cartilaginous fishes ostichthys are bony fishes but ostichthys are two classes now class actinopterygy they are living fishes they have got bones all our living bony fishes now we can see are coming under class are actinopterygy but sarcopterygy they are no more now example latimeria which is extinct then coming to the tetrapod organism super class tetrapoda amphibia reptilia apes and mammalia you don't want to discuss more you know amphibia are the organisms which have got two types of life stages one is exclusively aquatic second one is adapted to live both in water and land then reptilia apes apes are the birds then mammals mammals are again classified in two three subclasses prototheria metatheria and eutheria and eutheria are the advanced mammals which are divided into orders rodentia Chiroptera, Carnivora, Primata, Cetacea, Proboscidea, and Anglet. These are the fine structures or the division or the classification of the chordates. We will discuss each and every class 
order etc detail in next classes now thank you